reading of the gospel, the outdoor gospel, etc., at that at, at the amphitheater. And please remember to silence your cell phones uh, as we for the service itself. Thank you.
thing of your dreams, and the nation rejoices. Open your gates before him, lift up your voices. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal, Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation <coughs> may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. this year according to mark yeah good. great crowd had come to the feast heard that jesus was coming to jerusalem they took palm branches and went out to meet him and cried out hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord the king of Israel. Jesus found an ass and sat upon it as it is written. Fear no more, O daughter Zion. See, your king comes, seated upon an ass's colt. His disciples not, did not understand this at first. But when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done this for him. The gospel. In the name 
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, gracefully grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. And proclaim you in the midst 
Oh, fear the Lord, my people, give glory to God's name. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not, not during, during the, the festival, festival for, for fear, fear that, that there may be a riot among, among the people. The people. When he, when he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine, spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a, great, a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you. 
Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Whatever he enters, says to the master of the house. The teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. <coughs> the disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man in this goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks and gave it to them and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will have your faith shaken. For it is written, I will, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently did not replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. <clears throat> then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I, I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, 
Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a single with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. <coughs> one of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Father, the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said, Prophesy. Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priest with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, 
led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, Look he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed <coughs> that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. <coughs> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Five minutes only, I promise. <laughs> the Synoptic Gospels say that Jesus was ascending from Galilee to Jerusalem. It's a journey. This is the end of that journey, ascending from Galilee to Jerusalem. And The Lord's ultimate goal was to enter into Jerusalem and to go to the temple. It was his goal. And today we celebrate the end of that journey, his entrance into Jerusalem. And what happens on the way from Galilee to Jerusalem is very important too. For us, there is a great message for us there. The blind, the deaf, were, were, were there at the side of the roads and, and, and they were proclaiming that Jesus was the, the son of David and we're, they were asking him to be healed. One of them was Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, heal me. I cannot say. And the Lord healed Bartimaeus and he saw. He saw the Lord for the first time, and not much later he saw the Lord hanging on the cross. We should resemble those blind and deaf people. Let us open our eyes to see the Lord in this, in this holy week and to hear his voice calling us on Holy Thursday to love one another as he loves us. And to see him hanging on the cross, granting us redemption, salvation, and all the many other gifts which come with redemption and salvation. Happiness, freedom, peace, reconciliation, communion. Let us begin this Holy Week with that intention. I will hear the Lord. I will hear his commandment to love. I will see the Lord granting us the Eucharist, granting us that 
act of redemption of Holy, on Holy Friday, and then I will celebrate with my sisters and brothers his resurrection on Sunday. Five minutes, right? <laughs> Please stand. Let us proclaim our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and unmade, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, he was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the world, world to come. Amen. The Lord was obedient even unto death. May we be obedient to the responsibility we were given at baptism and pray for the needs of the world. For the church, that she may celebrate the liturgies of this holiest week of the year with sincerity and solemnity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For government leaders, that they recognize the people and places suffering and in need of new life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For catechumens and elect, that they empty themselves to rise with Christ in new life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who cry out in pain of abandonment, that we hear their cries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our community of faith, that we renew our commitment to living as Jesus' disciples this holy week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died as faithful disciples of Jesus, that having followed the way of passion and death, God's grace of resurrection will be theirs eternally. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And now we bow our heads and we remember the prayers that we hold deep in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God, our Father, just as your son claimed the, his authority over Jerusalem, so he enters our own hearts in order to guide and govern us. May our Lord Jesus Christ reign triumphant in all that we do and in every moment of our lives. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated. The song for the preparation and presentation of gifts is found in spirit and song at number 174, number 174, Your Only Son.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, may we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously may holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. <clears throat> As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Bridget, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Gustavo Garcia Sierra, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Father, listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Father, we pray for Maria del Carmen Gonzalez who is sick. And to our departed sisters and brothers, Father, we pray for all of our deceased relatives and friends and all the victims of that terror attack in Russia and all the victims of violence and persecution in many nations and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor, is yours forever and ever. Let us pray the Our Father at our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days. But that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold, this is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I I know know I should enter you should enter under my roof, but only say, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The song for Holy Communion is Jesus the Lord, found in Gather at number 418, number 418.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. <coughs> Lord, we pray, O Lord, on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. amen. Don't forget the Tridium, Holy Thursday, Holy Friday, and, and uh, Easter Sunday. You are invited, and please join us on the, for the, in the Easter Vigil, so, uh, Saturday, 8.30 p.m. That's a wonderful celebration, beautiful. And it is for every, everybody, not just for RCAA. It is for everybody. And we hear many things, prayers and readings and songs that we don't hear the rest of the year. So if we don't come to that celebration, we lose those graces. Holy, uh, the Holy Vision, Saturday, 8.30 p.m. Holy Thursday, 7 p.m. And Friday, 7 p.m. And the Way of the Cross and those many other uh, things we celebrate here, right? Yes, the Living Way of the Cross at? 3 p.m. 3 p.m. And Communion? Friday. Friday at 7 p.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. The recessional is Jesus, remember me, gather 404.